but you can do that in person. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, my name is Sandra Morgan. Um, in 2008, I started a company called Kalon Women. Um, it's a magazine for women 40 plus and, and men also. Um, over a period of three years, when I started the magazine, I didn't really have a database of about 200 is all. And so I didn't really know how to market. I didn't have a whole lot of money to do the marketing with. So I jumped on social media. And within three years, we had grown our database to close to 90,000 subscribers. And all of it was done through social media. And then I had people asking me if I could help them do it. And um, so I started doing consulting work and then it kind of evolved into more of a, um, I really don't want to do this, so can you do it for me <laughs> kind of, kind of uh, development. So that's, that's how it got started. And um, right now um, our business is growing and everything is going great. So if you're ready, we'll go ahead and get started. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Well, hopefully by now we can all agree that social media has given consumers the most powerful voice they ever, they've ever had. You know, it's still universally accepted that word of mouth has always been considered the very best form of advertising. And since Facebook's like button was introduced in the spring of 2010, users can now show their approval of others' photos, articles, ideas, discoveries, videos, products, and services with just one simple click. In fact, it's estimated that Facebook's like button now gets more than 1 billion clicks per day. And they just hit the 1 billion member mark the other day. So if you're still fighting the Facebook revolution, just remember, it's not going away. And if you don't embrace it, your business just might be. Okay, so we all have an opportunity to reach more people in a significant way through recommendations. And it all starts with improving our communication. And as salespeople or business owners, we can all start by being a more proactive listener and talking less. So the more we listen, the more people talk, and the faster your relationship grows. What you need to start asking yourself when it comes to social media is these four what questions. And if you'll go ahead and do the first one. It's up there. There you go. What do your customers like? Number two. Done. What do they value as relevant or important? What do they value as relevant or important? Number three. Three's up. What content will get them to click your like button? Four's up. And what are some ways you can increase your, your two-way conversations with friends, followers, and fans? Okay. So here are a few things your customers wish you knew about them how they see you and about your relationship. And if you just want to go ahead and click them all less, that's fine. And I'll read them as we, as we go along. Go ahead. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. My life is really stressful. If you can reduce that stress, you become immensely valuable to me. I want to tell you what would make this relationship better for me. Why don't you ever ask me? And that's a big fallacy that we all have as business owners when it comes to social media. We want to tell them everything that we want to tell them, and we really don't listen to what they want us to say to them. Um, I don't understand a lot of the messages you send me. Can you make them clearer? We have to make everything very, very clear when we use social media. I want to trust you, but it's hard for me to trust anyone. And that goes across the board with social media. I spend an awful lot of time being scared to death. And right now in the in the atmosphere that we're at with our economy and everything, this is one fact that everybody is stating. And the wealthier I get, the more I like free stuff. I like to get little goodies no one else is getting. I don't understand how to use your website, but I can't admit that because it would make me feel dumb. If you as a business owner do not know how to navigate your own website, your customers are not going to know how. So make sure that your, your website is easily navigable. I hate salespeople, but I really like to buy things. There's something in my life that I'm afraid of losing. If you can make me feel like you've protected it for me, my gratitude will be intense and eternal. This has to do more with their information. They want, they're fearful of their information getting out there and someone else getting it. I have the attention span of a goldfish. We all know that. Go too long without contacting me and I'll simply forget you exist. 
I believe I deserve much more than I'm getting. I want to tell you everything you need to know in order to sell me, but I'm lazy. Make it easy enough and I will. I don't know what I want most of the time and you need to figure it out for me. And it really is all about me. Okay. So some of the things on this list might seem cynical, but they're really not. The fact is it doesn't matter what kind of customers you have. I really don't care if your customers are kidney donors or Zen masters or million dollar contributors to your nonprofit organization. Each one of us has some less than lovable characteristics that tend to come to the forefront when we're in the role of customer. So if you knew, if you really knew these 15 things about your customers and acted accordingly, you'd gain their trust and even their love. After all, who doesn't want to be loved and despite all of our flaws and embarrassing insecurities? The better we understand both the noble and not so noble secrets in our customers' consciousness, the better we can serve them. Okay, next slide. Okay, let's not get caught up with buzzwords here. This is very simple. If your clients are important to you, then social media is important to you because those are your clients speaking to you direct. Now, let's, let's repeat that. Those are your clients speaking to you direct on social media. You have access, direct access to the hearts and the minds of the people who use your services in real time, seven days a week. To create real value from this interaction, you need to go beyond the hype of engagement to the simple reality of what social media is about. It's about understanding what your customers find relevant or important. And that what your customers want, you need to listen long before you engage. And then listening grants you insight. Okay, and now, once you've got that, now you're ready to connect. Engagement is only valuable when it is the culmination of listening. Consumers who utilize social media are by and large savvy and they can easily spot shallow marketing techniques. So we need to be really careful. Consequently, businesses more than ever need to be thoughtful in their approach. For me, engagement is not the interaction that happens within superficial discussions on Twitter. It's not about counting fans on Facebook. It's the handling of that information, and it's turning that information into insight. That's engagement, the connections we make. Socials, social media is not a fad, so let's not get all caught up in all the hype. If you're new to social media, my advice to you is simple. Forget all about the marketing hype of engagement. Start with observing and listening. Analyze what you hear and use it to gain insight into what your customers really find relevant or important. Yes, engagement is important, but listening is critical. So let's talk about what content will get them to, cl to click on your like button. It's your story, the story. It's never to be underestimated, and it's a captivating tale to get your message across, and one, hopefully, that will get people talking about you and your business. It's always about the story telling a tale that flows, that connects, that resonates, and that sparks conversation once the story itself has reached its end. This is evident today more than ever with the rise of social media. It's not just about the story anymore. More importantly, it's based upon the, the conversation surrounding the story. It's easy to gauge what gets people talking, sharing, liking, while adding their own thoughts to the original tale. And these types of conversations can offer a lot of value to those participating, especially to the original storyteller, which is you, the business owner. You need to know what they're saying about your story, how they're interacting with your story. Now, keep one thing in mind. We can have all of these social media pieces out there. We can have a great Facebook page and we can be on every kind of social media piece that we, we, have, we, can, we can jump on. But keep one thing in mind, feedback from our communities is invaluable. And if we're not getting that, we're getting nowhere. So what story are you telling? And does it get them to click on your like button? Does it get people talking? All right, so let's go to the next slide and we're gonna talk about the things that is important 
that uh, ways that you can increase your two-way conversations with friends, followers, and fans. And this is very important. I think that at times, most of the time, we're having a one-way conversation with our friends, followers, and fans. And we think it's things that they, we, what we think that they want to hear from us, what we think that we want to tell them. So first of all, read your target audience's online content. How many times do you go to their page, go to their business page to see what they're talking about, to see what, how they're interacting and what they are interested in doing? Number two, join. Join discussions to learn what's important to them. What are they discussing? Are you jumping in on their discussions? We have a tendency to just want people to come to our page and to join in with our discussions. And so we don't go to other people's pages and join in their discussions. And that's very, very critical. Okay, and the next one is not acknowledge. Always acknowledge every person who reaches out to you. I know that that's difficult when you have, for instance, if you have 100 people joining your Facebook page, it's, it's very overwhelming and it, you think it's very hard to acknowledge them uh, for liking your page. It takes just a few minutes to go onto your wall of your Facebook page and welcome all of your new Facebook fans. Once in a while, just go in, go in and do that. Maybe every 10 days, maybe every 15 days. Go in there and acknowledge all of your new Facebook, Facebook fans because then they will appreciate you more. Um, number th the last one definitely is very, very important. Be available. What happens most of the time is we post something on our Facebook pages and then we go on and we do something else and we don't come back until, you know, sometimes a week later. Don't publish your content and then disappear. You have to be available to your audience to answer questions, to, to talk about what's going on. And if we're not available to them, they will definitely get discouraged and they will leave your page and they will unlike your page. So, and then our last uh, part, one thing that we need to understand when it comes to Facebook likes, I know everybody says, well, I want a million likes on my page. That's not the important thing to have. It's better to have a thousand online connections who read, share, and talk about your content with their own audiences than 10,000 connections who disappear after connecting with you the first time. This is something that we want to, to avoid. We want them to stay with us. We want them to be um, active and to participate. And if they're not doing that, your, your Facebook page is not doing what it needs to be doing. So with that being said, that kind of concludes my presentation and we can open up the floor to any questions that anyone might have. Uh, Sandra, thanks very much. Uh, we have a microphone set up here at the front. If anybody has a question, um, just step up to the microphone and, and we'll be happy to do that. Sandra, it seems that the, the mysteries of social media grow every day uh, with the proliferation of the amount of social media networks that are out there. Um, now, you keyed primarily this morning on, on Facebook. Is there, is there any rule that says what social networks we should be involving ourselves in? You know, it, it's geared toward your, toward your business. What I like to tell people is this. Um, jumping onto social media, if you're not going to do it on a full-time basis, you're not going to be really active, I suggest that you don't jump on social media um, as far as your business is concerned is um, LinkedIn is your social media business and Facebook of your social media casual attack. On Facebook you can be more casual, talk about fun things, whereas you're really kind of stuck with attire. So I don't know if that answered your question. Well, it does for me. I mean, we're breaking up a little bit with the communications. We're going to see if we can straighten that out. We have a question from, uh, gee, Al Garlic. Good morning, Al. Hey, Sandra. Can you hear me? I think there's an on button on there. Oh. Is the mic on? Technology's great when it works. When it works. Here, use this one. I'm 
use this one. I know this one works. Talk, talk into my chest. <laughs> hey, Sandra, it's Al Garlic. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> she can't hear me. She can't hear you? Hi. Sandra, can you hear me? It's Al Garlic. Hear you. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Hey, uh, we've had this conversation in the past, and I thought it might be enlightening um, to talk about the pros and the cons of the systems and software that will automate your posts across many social media platforms, and because that's all changed in the last few months. Can you really do that? What? 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 I'd be interested in the answer. Well, there's. You. Uh, well, we we had it on and off. Maybe the battery's dead. Could you hear the question? Uh oh. Now we lost Sandra. Hear <laughs> me? Hello. Yeah, we're here. Sandra, could you hear the question? Oh, boy. Can you hear the question? I mean, um, you're breaking up here. Let's start. Did you hear the question clearly? Yes, I did. I heard the question. Okay, and then I'll just turn it over to you. And Okay. So, so there are a lot of programs here um, that you to schedule your tweets and tweet. And the don't we love Skype? Everybody, don't we love Skype? Hear me. You hear me? No, barely. Uh, we're having an issue with Skype this morning. I think uh, wherever in the world you are, it's, it's not the greatest, but um, uh -huh. try it again. Are you loud and Well, that noise says Skype has decided we're not worthy. Well, you there, Sandra? Yes, I am here. Can you? It's breaking up pretty severely. We're going to try and call you back. That's the noise we wait for with in great anticipation. One day, I promise you, one day we're going to get this all right. Just doesn't appear today is that day. Okay, is that better? Yes. <laughs> okay, can you hear me now? Loud and clear. Awesome. Okay, to answer your question, um, there's a lot of programs out there that were created to help with the ease of posting um, to Facebook, to Twitter, to LinkedIn. The problem is, is that all of Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter have all become very smart when it comes to that. And what they're real, what they were realizing is that there was not actually a physical person logging into their LinkedIn account, logging into their Facebook account and Twitter account, and that these posts were coming from third-party um, um, applications. So what has happened? Let's take Facebook for instance. If you use Hootsuite for example, as one of the programs to post, to automatically post your Facebook post or your Twitter post, Facebook is taking those out of the feed. They're not allowing those to go into the main feed where all of your connections can see them. The reason being, and rightly so, is they want a physical person going in there and posting these because if they don't, if they don't watch it, it's going to be a bunch of bots out there just posting things and not an actual human being um, interacting with their Facebook page, their, their connections. And that's what um, um, Facebook and now Twitter, Twitter has stopped allowing third-party applications to post to um, take their Twitter feeds and post them to the other sites. So we have to be really careful if we're still using these products and understand that your feeds are not being seen on Facebook, and Twitter has stopped allowing those. So um, I hope that answers your question. Sandra, another question we had come up is the uh, use of free public relations sites. Um, there's always an issue that if you create a press release and you send it through a quote-unquote free PR site, that it's not being distributed. Are there any tricks to getting noticed or... Is, is the free method not the way to go? You know, the, the free method is, is okay. I mean, it's going to get out there. 
um, your, your message will get out there. It's not going to get picked up by the people that you really wanted to get picked up. Um, let's face it that, you know, most companies want you to pay their fee. They want you to pay their fee to send out a press release. And there are some sites out there that aren't so expensive and they do get you out there. The one thing I can tell people too is when you're putting out a press release, even a free one, contact your local newspapers, contact your local business journals and things like that. Contact them direct with your press release. Don't wait for it, them to try and pick it up through the um, through the free press release because nine times out of ten it's not going to it's just not going to happen. Plus, you need to also be taking your press release and putting it out there across all of your social media. It needs to go out in your newsletter. It needs to go on your blog. It needs to go everywhere. And so. We can't put a, a press release out on the free press release and expect it to do all the work by itself. Well, that was kind of my next question. What is press release etiquette when it comes to social media and your clients? You, uh, when it comes to press releases, it's just like a press release works. You can put on to Facebook for immediate release. I mean, you can put that on there and shout to the rooftops as to what's going on with your company. So it, it works just like you would be sending out a press release on social media. These are things that you want your clients to know. So by all means, um, go out there and shout it to the mountaintops. Sandra, the last question I have, you know, we, we have this uh, debate internally all the time. How much contact with a client or a prospect is too much? How many times, like this event, we sent out three emails notifying people of, of this event. Is there a right number? Is there a wrong number? How often do you inundate people on when they get say, that's enough? Well, that's, that's a tricky one. <laughs> that's a tricky one because um, what I normally tell people is you have to blog, number one, no less than three times a week. No less than three times a week. Um, go out and post it onto your social media accounts no less than three times a week. Um, those, are, those are key components. Um, the reason I say three times a week for your blog, um, Google will start to pick you up for, for um, three times a week, minimum of three times a week posting to your, to your website. Uh, Google loves that. Um, any, and as far as anything more than that, you know, I have clients, I have people that I'm connected with on Facebook and on Twitter and stuff, and, and they are just constantly bombarding. They go on and they post 20 things at one time. I will be honest with you, I, I disconnect with those people because it's very annoying, it's very irritating. So I would suggest that three times a week is probably the best thing. If you want to once a day, that's fine. But I would say, you know, posting you know, 10 to 15 things every single day on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. If you're staying in connection with your, with, for instance, if you take your post, your blog post, and you put it on your, your LinkedIn feed or you put it on your LinkedIn group, that's going to reach your connections because LinkedIn will send out your information. So three times a week, we seem um, to see that that is really benefiting our clients at least a minimum of three times a week. Great. And if anybody has any further questions for Sandra, uh, we've posted here on the screen your contact information, and I assume you accept phone calls and emails and Absolutely. tweets and friends and all that good stuff. Absolutely. Just look us up. Great. Sandra, thanks so much for your uh, presentation this morning. Thanks for having me, Les. Have a good day. You too. We'll chat soon. Bye-bye.